Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Conscious Marketer Podcast. This is Richard here, and I'm joined by Kylie. Hi, Kylie. Hello. And we're going to talk about one of our, I don't know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a topic that we think about a lot because, um, and we just call it raising the stakes. And I think we think about this a lot um, because we work with a lot of really powerful creators and on one side, sometimes we have somebody who's like so motivated and they're just taking action every day and they're, they're like thriving. It's like they, it's like they have this hidden, like Tesla battery inside their consciousness that like powers them. And it's just, it always refills almost like the power of the sun or something. And then on the other side, you, we might have another person in our field that has, you know, has so many powerful creative ideas, but they just... I think there was a movie with Ma Matthew McConaughey. It's called Failure to Launch, you know, where <laughs> where they it's it's kind of like it's a nice there's the intention, but something stops that individual for whatever reason, fear or fear of success or failure, and they they're just they're just not motivated to really step out and to get it out there. And so this this raising the stakes is just this concept of. Really, what do you need to do inside yourself to become the person that is going to really get your work into the world? What does that mean? What does raising the stakes mean for you, Kylie? What, what does that phrase mean for you? I know we probably have different interpretations of what that means. Well, absolutely. I think in goal setting, like you're talking about, or who you're becoming or how you're transforming, it's super important. And for me, storytelling and the parallels between story and life are always so obvious and so in storytelling, there's something called raising the stakes. Now we have a hero heroine at the beginning of every film or every story, and something happens to disturb the balance in their world or to shake them out of their comfort zone. And then they start moving towards it. They, they, they make a decision and they chase a goal. And if that goal is totally arbitrary, we don't care. So what they say is raise the stakes to make people care about the goal. Cause then you go on that adventure with them. You're cheering them on. So raising the stakes might be, I lose my job and I, I go on to, well, actually there's that film with Will Smith and his son, Jaden Smith. And I can't remember what it's called, but he, and they're like sleeping in a subway and the stakes are that he has to succeed in this new financial endeavor, even though he's been failing, 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 failing at sales, because he has to get his kid out of the subway station, sleeping in the subway station. So that is raising the stakes. We don't really care about him achieving in the business world. Honestly, it's like, okay, great. You're like one in a bajillion other people that want to succeed in business. But when we see why he's doing it, then we can really start to see why that matters and why we should care. So I think it parallels what you're saying, but it's it's more just in the story format of how to get people to get involved and get immersed in the story itself. Well, it's interesting because this this hero's journey, this myth, I don't I don't know that I, I think you just explained it so clearly, but if you see yourself on the path, then it's kind of like you have to kind of think what are the stakes that that I need, how do I raise my own stakes to, to put me into action? And I think in the hero's journey, I think, I think it could happen to you, you know, like you're on this, in the subway, or I've been in situations where I have to pay my rent, you know, or, um, you know, maybe, maybe you're, you know, more extreme, you're in a natural disaster and you have to get your family out or whatever it is, you know, uh, or protecting somebody, you know, so sometimes I think, I think raising the stakes is done for you. It's like the universe is like, I'm going to raise the stakes for you, you know? Uh, but I, I think in our world today, you know, so many people have a pretty decent life, you know, they got enough money in the bank or enough, just enough, just enough is a terrible place to be, by the way, they have just enough. Uh, and they're, they can feed themselves and maybe they can feed their family. The job's okay, but this, there, you almost have to say to yourself, how do I raise the stakes so that, you know, I think it was Thoreau that said something about life of mediocrity or whatever, you know? So it's like, how do you raise the stakes so that you actually go for something bigger, even, even if you might fail, you know? 
Um, so how, how does that, maybe Kylie, can you share some ideas on how we could raise the stakes for ourselves? I'm going to pitch this back to you and put you on. Yeah. Well, so for my own life, I have this really ridiculous goal of shifting consciousness on the planet. And I know that I can play a small role in it, but I don't think I can be the be all end all, but I think I can inspire people to have hope that it's possible. And I think that's the thing that I'm the best at because they hear how ridiculous my goal is of reaching 380 million people. And then they think that their goal is more possible. So in terms of my work, when I talk about raising the stakes, it's looking at what's happening on the planet and knowing that if we don't step up, it's not going to get better. So we have all this technology that could save the planet in probably 10 days, but we're not using it for that because we don't have the consciousness to make those decisions. And, and so in my own business desires and goals and in my own personal life, that's the thing that keeps me going. The stakes are that the world could be in some pretty dire straits if we don't all step up. And my role in that is helping other people step up and for myself. So I think that's, I think that setting a really ridiculous goal can be powerful, especially if you're someone like me who really needs that extreme level of challenge to thrive. So that's one thing. And also I thought about this. You you also, you know, other people can raise the stakes to get your money. And that happened to me one time when I first moved to Nashville, I was walking down the street and this girl was like, Hey, do you like animals? And I love animals, but I just looked at her and I said, Nope. (laughs) I kept on walking and then she's like, Hey, I love your tattoo. And I love my tattoo too. So then I went back and started talking to her and then she started raising those stakes about what was happening to these little puppies and these little dogs. And all of a sudden she gets a subscription payment out of me within like 15 minutes. And I looked at her and I said, you are good. And she was like 20, you know? So if you're selling something, knowing how to appeal to what other people are raising those stakes on and about, I think it's really important. I think it's something we all need to know how to do. Yeah. Well, I think, I think you could almost do like an inventory, you know, through your own, you, each of us could do an inventory of our own lives and like, at what points were you really motivated? And I think, I think at some point, uh, you know, in some, in some ways, as you grow, I think the stakes get bigger and you really find out what's more important to you too. So I'm a little bit like you, I kind of need like a little bit more extreme goals, you know? So whether it's like fitness or business goals, I like to pick really bigger things and then chunk, chunk it down into like more reliable goals. I know also for me, a big driver has been, and I think, I think for some it's been to help others overcome, like they've gone through some kind of trauma or some major event, and then they feel called to help others to do the same. I also feel, um, I feel a lot of us have gifts that can help serve others. And so I, I sometimes will think of, um, I'll think of the work I do is not so much to do marketing, but, uh, but to go out there. And if I can help, you know, say a relationship person that works with couples create a better family, then I can prevent a suicide in that house. Or I can, you know, somebody, if I can help a health coach to grow their business and get 50 dads, you know, to lose their dad bod or whatever the, whatever the thing is, then I'm going to extend the lifespan of those people. And then those people can create something or they can serve their community. And so it, it's kind of interesting because you can look at anything and it's just about perspective. So for me, it's when I'm helping somebody, I'm helping them to go out and save lives and improve lives and, and, and raise consciousness. And um, I think this has kind of evolved through the years. And, you know, if, if you just want to go out and make money, there might be a point in your life where that's okay, where you just like, that's a goal and it actually drive drives you. And then you make the money and you're like, ah, I need something deeper. (laughs) And then you got to find something deeper and find something deeper and something deeper until you find something that's literally like, it's just, it's like driven from your soul that you have to do. Um, And you know that um, it's yours to do. You have to do it and it's yours to do. The other thing that I like to, to um, just remind myself, and this is a lot of spiritual traditions will do this, but they'll have you meditate on death. Uh, I was, I've spoken to various pretty high spiritual teachers and 
a lot of spiritual traditions have you think about, you know, your demise. And uh, you can either think of your own demise or even in our own company, in our field this week, we had, you know, some, some losses. And when somebody close to you dies, it impacts you, you know, because you realize that you're mortal and you actually have probably less time than you think of, uh, than you may have. Uh, and so as that happens, I think it's, uh, it adds this uh, urgency to do what you need to do. And then the last thing I would just say is, you know, there are windows of opportunity to do things in life and those kind of open and close. And often they open and close a lot faster than you think they're going to. And so just recognize that you may be in a space right now where you have opportunity and you have freedom and you even have resources to do the things that really can make an impact on your own lives and lives and others but the world is always changing. The economy is always changing and some things you can control and some things you can't. And so when there's a kind of a, a clear road ahead, I really encourage you to take it, you know, and go for that thing that you know you're meant to do. I love that. Looking at our own mortality to ra <laughs> raise the stakes. I mean, it's so true. It's like, I, I was thinking the other day, how many hours of my day do I waste checking social media? And how much could that add up to reading a book or talking to a client or something like that? And yet it's something that I continue to do. So I'm just, yeah, I love that you said that because it's, it contextualizes everything. It's like, how am I raising the stakes? Oh, I could die any minute. So what do I want to be doing with my life? But what do I want to be doing with my day, my week, my month? And I, I actually, that's how I break my goals up. You know, I have this big, huge vision and then I'm like, what do I want to do each quarter, each month, each week, each day, and whether or not I do it, at least I'm working towards doing it in that manner. And yeah. I think that that's, that's a good way to look at what those stakes are and then, and then breaking it down into what is reasonable, like you said. And I like to get back to the kind of story part of it because one of the people who I've learned a lot from is called Robert McKee. He's a big Hollywood story guy, been a part of some really brilliant movies. And he said that if you can't get emotional about the person who is the hero of the story, then you won't be cheering them on as they go through the story. You will, you will be irritated by them, envious by them. You won't like them. You'll see them as someone who's blocking you from achieving your goals. And so if we don't have this important aspect of storytelling, of living, of goal setting, we're not going to also make those connections that are going to make such a big difference for us. I've made some really powerful connections in business that have catapulted me to a whole new level of status, of prestige, of money, of happiness, of contribution, of values. And without really having that crazy goal that I have um, and for why it matters, none of that would have happened. And I want to also address, because I've had a lot of clients over the years say like, I don't have a crazy goal. I have, I want to help a hundred people. That's awesome. Still think about what's going to happen if you don't help those people. That's where you can find the stakes. What is going to happen if you don't help them? What is going to happen for you? What is going to happen for them? What is going to happen for the world if you don't do it? That's how you can create that emotional charge that gets you where you want to go and has other people support your mission as well. Because I think that that's, that's necessary. We can't do this alone. Yeah, I love that. So for everybody listening, uh, I guess I would give you if you a uh, mission if you choose to accept, just write down like three ways that you could raise the stakes. And as you were talking, Kylie, I really sensed that um, it's, it's an interesting thing, you know, cause it's like, tell your, you tell your origin story or the hero's journey. But I really, I feel in my own life and I feel in the company's life and I, you know, like we're kind of traveling this journey together with conscious marketer, but I feel like we're in the middle of the hero's journey. You know, we've been around a few times, but we're literally in the middle of it. And we're, we're literally writing our own story every day as we wake up. And so it's like, what story do you want to write? And I think that's the exercise is how are you going to raise the stakes in the story that you're living breath to breath right now? And it's just a decision. Like, look, I'm going to raise the stakes so that I really start to accelerate my goals. Like how, how do I become twice as productive? How do I find the people I need to 
help? And how do I get my work out into the world? How do I, how do I get leverage on my own self? I, and I think for everybody, it's going to be different. But even if you just find one or two ways to raise the stakes in your life, it can make a huge, huge impact. And then think about that every day, you know, think, th think that you're in this raise the stakes part of your process, because once the stakes are raised, then it's, it's almost like then, then kind of full circle, it's like you've installed the Tesla battery pack or whatever your analogy is, you know, into your own soul. And you can, you know, you wake up every day ready to go. You're like, okay, I, I don't have any time to waste. I've got to get this done. And you don't have to wait for the health scare or the trauma or the economy collapsing or whatever the partner abandoning you or whatever the thing that could happen is you can raise your own stakes in a conscious way to make things happen. Any final thoughts, Kylie, on that? I like that you compared the storytelling and the hero's journey to the story of their own life and how we're living things. And I think that what we're talking about really relates to living a life of purpose and meaning and fueling that. Yeah. And I, I really am passionate about that. I love it when I can spark that hope in other people that what they're here to do can be done. And the only thing that's stepping or that's standing in the way of them and their goal is that they don't like marketing or they're afraid of marketing or they don't know how to do marketing. And I just love taking the stakes that I've raised in my own life and what my goals matter to me and passing that to other people in the form of helping them understand what I understand about what marketing even is. So I love that. And I know that one of the ways that we've asked our clients to step it up because of what matters for them is creating a mastermind called the source and Richard, this was really your brainchild. So do you want to share more about what that is and why, why we've asked people to step into it? Yeah. I mean, in our own company, we have the accelerator, which is kind of getting one of your first launches or really improving, you know, how you get things into the market and the sources for people who want a little more, uh, you know, full-time mentorship. We ask for like a year commitment because we know that it, if you really want to create big impact in the world, you need like powerful mentors, but not only that, you need a group of aligned people. So the source, the name came in because we realized that people wanted community. They didn't want to do this alone. And that also um, they needed to connect to their own source of power, which is their own higher self, their own soul. And if they could connect to that power source and put that into their work on a daily basis, um, then they could really become unstoppable, but you need help with that one. <laughs> uh, you need a mentor, you need a guide, uh, and you need an aligned group. So that's, this is the source mastermind. It's a year program. It's a higher end offer. We have, if that's something you're interested in learning more about, um, you can just email us at support at conscious marketer, and we can just set up a quick phone call to see if it's right for you. We have a, around 20 people in there now, and, we're going to, um, we open it from time to time and add a few members here and there and really a super powerful group and a really aligned group that are doing amazing things in the world. And they're, uh, it's a place where you can share your biggest stream and have people go, yeah, let's do that. Or how, how can we help you versus like, are you crazy? And what, who, who are you to do that? So like that you leave that group behind and you enter a group where it's a field of possibility, but it's more than that you know, it's a field of action. And when you, um, I think one of the biggest ways you can raise the stakes with your mentor is to hire, is to be part of a group and to, and to be accountable to that group, but also to, you know, uh, hire somebody where the, the fee to join them, uh, it makes you take action because you want to get a return on your investment. Um, and also to get your work in the world. So, uh, I've done that. I, I would, I would say that, the, the biggest growth spurts of my own career have been by aligning with a powerful group of individuals um, and hiring uh, mentors that were a few levels above where I'm at. So that's the, that's the source mastermind. Again, if you're interested in that, you can just uh, email us at support at conscious and we'll get back to you personally. So thanks for joining us here on this episode. Uh, it's just a pleasure to, to both teach and give value and also invite you into our programs. If you want to get the um, download of this episode, you can go to consciousmarketer.com forward slash podcast. We really appreciate it when you give us reviews and share our podcast, whether you're on iTunes or Spotify. Um, thanks again for joining us today. And we look forward to hearing and we look forward to speaking with you on the next episode. Bye for now.